who was last year's Lou Groza Award winner as the best kicker in the country. He's out with a wrist injury. Green was one for two on in relief last week, and he will handle the kicking duties today. R.J. Shelton, Delton Williams, the two deep men for the Spartans in all green this afternoon. And Shelton will take a knee. They'll start at the 25. Connor Cook is the 6'4", 220-pound senior who may be the first quarterback drafted next spring. He is the winningest quarterback in school history at 31 and 4. That includes a 20 and 2 mark against Big Ten opposition and his 21 touchdowns are tops in the conference. He's one of the winningest quarterbacks in college football right now. And I think when you watch him, he really he really translates to the next level. Pocket presence, under center, shotgun, rolling outside the pocket. I've really been impressed by his play. Terps will come in with the defense that can get to the quarterback. 32 sacks. They'll try and get some heat on Cook and the rollout. Connor will step outside the 30-yard line. Pickup of eight yards for Cook. It'll be second and short. And again, the power run game is what this offense really puts their staple on. But to me, Connor Cook can beat you with his arm. And Maryland's going to have a lot of defensive players in the box today to try to stop this run. So don't be surprised if they take some shots down the field against this press coverage. Cook's passing numbers way up over the last four games. This is the give to Gerald Holmes. Of course, last year they had Jeremy Langford. This year they're going with a stable of young running backs led by Holmes who will get the start today for the third game in a row. Heavy dose for Holmes today in the running game. Burbridge arguably is one of the top receivers in the Big Ten. Yannick Ngakwe, he leads second in FBS in sacks with his hand down as a rusher and up off the ground and will likely press coverage. Little man syndrome. He's only 5'7", but he plays a lot bigger than that on the outside. And get used to seeing a lot of number four. He's defending up at the top of your screen. He'll also play offense, and he's one of the top kick and punt return guys in the country as Holmes gets another carry wrapped up by Azabuki Ukando, the junior out of Towson, Maryland. There's a look at Will Likely, the junior out of Belle Glade, Florida, all Big Ten selection. In your face, cornerback will put pressure on you. He's very aggressive on the outside of tackling. 5'7", 175. He's, he's scratching to get to 5'7", yeah. folks. But I tell you, he plays big time. And if you ask him to get the best receiver, he's going to find him, and he's going to guard him all day. Cook out of the gun on second and eight. Slammed as he lets it go. Incomplete. Yannick Ngakwe was wrapped all around Cook. That's a battle to watch today. Well, he is unblocked. There's a slide inside. Bring a blitz inside and, and come off the edge. Again, if you're going to try to stop some of this pass rush and this blitz packages, you better put a body on Yannick Ngankwe. He will stay out there on the right side, battling with Conklin here on third down. On the stunt, more pressure coming. Cook sidesteps it, throws incomplete. Underneath, Jalen Brooks, the linebacker got in there so some heat from the Terps here early and they will force the punt Berger will punt it away and will likely will step back around his own 20 yard line he's got two punt return touchdowns. give him four for his career Barger will try and angle it towards the right side, takes a bounce, not get near it, and it will be the 29-yard line, a 29-yard punt. And the Maryland offense will go to work with Perry Hills out of Central Catholic High School in Pittsburgh, the same high school that produced Dan Marino and Mark Bolger onto the NFL. He's a dual threat guy, but more significant with his feet than with his arm, and the accuracy is an issue Eight touchdowns on the season, Anthony, with 11 picks. He's had some big rushing games this year, notably 170 yards against Ohio State. He's going to look for his first receiver if he's not home. Look for him to scramble a bunch and extend plays out of the pocket. He hasn't been an accurate passer, 
But if these strong safeties start cheating up, he could get you over the top. First and ten, the give is to Wes Brown, who gets his first start of the season. The junior out of Baltimore. Big time recruit for Maryland. Down through his first couple of seasons, now getting a chance to carry the load. And he'll go in there also with Brandon Ross, 45, one of their top rushers. But pass protection's been an issue for him. That's why Wes Brown gets the start today in the backfield. Brown will stay offset on second and ten. Play action for Hills. Looking to throw it deep. Has a man downfield, and it's incomplete, and flags are down. DeAndre Lane was the intended receiver. Grayson Miller, the true freshman safety, may be the guy that gets flagged here. Pass interference. Defense, number 44. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Well, it'll be the inside receiver on the top of the screen. And, and the problem is, number 44, Grayson Miller's had his ups and downs. He lets the receiver get behind him with a double move at the top of the round. And because of the, the, inter, the underthrown football, he runs right through the offensive player, and they're going to call that every time. So the anticipation at the quarterback position has to improve, but a big play early on the penalty. It's coming from Michigan State, and it's... Uh, Riley Bullock, who was the first guy to Kenneth Goins. Well, one of the issues for this Michigan State defense has been their defensive backs. They've been nicked up. They're young guys. They've taken some pressure and some heat this season. Well, the problem is, one, they don't have situational experience. They haven't been in the big games. They haven't had enough reps to be in the right spots. And you talk about the linebacker position, Riley Bullock, Darian Harris, these guys have to constantly turn around and make sure these DBs are lined up in the right spots. Movement on second 11. On the right side, Shalit Calhoun and uh, Ryan Doyle. Offside. Defense, number 89. Five yard penalty, second down. And in order to help out those DBs, Anthony, the coaching staff, Mike Tressel, one of the defensive coordinators, said, we got to win the edge. we got to get some pressure to help our DBs out today. I think they challenged the defensive line of Michigan State. Listen, when you have DBs that are young and inexperienced, don't leave them out there to cover guys for four or five seconds. you got to get a pass rush up front. It's going to start with 89 Calhoun and Lawrence Thomas, number eight, at the defensive end position. On the drop ball, squirts free, and it's recovered by Michigan State. Dowell knocked it out, and Damon knocked recovered it it is the 31st turnover of the season for Maryland that is by far the most in the country cool pride we thank you all for your service and Michigan State and Maryland off of the takeaway the fumble for Maryland and from midfield in the 50-yard line, a new quarterback out there for Michigan State is Tyler O'Connor, the 6'3 junior out of Ohio. On first and 10, he'll flip it to R.J. Shelton. And the receiver end around, and he's uh, trying to reach close to the 40-yard line. Down to Paul Carcaterra. Michigan State fans, do not worry. Connor Cook is on the sideline. He's fine. This looks like a planned type of rep for Tyler O'Connor. I just heard Connor Cook and quarterback coach Brad Salem discussing Maryland's aggressive defense. They expect the blitz. We've got to pick it up. It's going to give a lot of opportunities on the outside. One-on-one -on -one coverage, Anthony. Well, Cook has already uh, gotten knocked down a couple of times on second and one. Gerald Holmes, nice cutback, squirts out of a tackle or two down inside the 35-yard line of first down. And it's going to be about pass protection with all those blitzes. And you look at uh, Gerald Holmes right now. He's been uh, very good running the football, but young players. He's only a sophomore. they got a redshirt freshman and a true freshman running back. When you see those blitzes, you've got to find your backers and those free defenders and pick them up and protect your quarterback. They've been disrupting the passing game. Little interesting though, Connor Cook not in the game, but working other quarterbacks mm -hmm. in. He is arguably the best quarterback in college football. Yes. And they go to Tyler O'Connor here early to shake things up a bit. Holmes will stay in at tailback. And again, they will go with the receiver and around McGarrett King 
comes hurtling over a defender, gets down inside the 30. He went over the top of Sean Davis, and he picks up five yards. Quick, shifty inside receiver, super athlete. And really, when it comes down to it, you got to make some plays. And he's only 5'10", folks, but he just broke the high jump record right there going over the turf. Defensive uh, cornerback Davis, number 21. And Davis is not short. He's 6'1", so he's a big corner. He's got some ups there. On second and five, again, intriguing start. Connor Cook is not out there for this series as they go to Tyler O'Connor at quarterback. He will throw, passes incomplete, and as you mentioned, he's, Cook is one of the best quarterbacks in the, in the country, so curious as to why they would make this move here. Well, you know, here's the thing. If he missed some hot reads on those two uh, blitzing packages that Maryland had in the last series, maybe they bring him out, but at the end of the day, you make those corrections on the sideline, you figure it out, you see that first pass. There's, that's O'Connor's first pass of the season, folks. I'm not quite sure why Connor Cook's out in the game right now. We'll look back on it and see. I'm not quite sure if this is a package played right now, but interesting he's not in the football game. Especially at this juncture early in the game, he's down on the sideline right next to Mark D'Antonio. It's third and five. Pass is caught for the first down initially as Kings reaches forward. I believe they're going to rule this a completion and then he was down before the ball came out it's a pickup of seven and the officials look ready to move the chains yeah, it looked like he caught this and just tried to give an extra effort reading leaning towards the uh, first down marker there nice job catching the football obviously bounce off when he hits the ground and now perhaps mike loxley was uh, down there in the ear of the officials timeout merlin First of the half. Be a 30 second charge timeout. Maryland will take the timeout. Uh, Loxley replacing Randy Edsel midseason. The Terps come in 2 and 7. They're 0 and 5 in the league. They've lost six in a row, but since Loxley took. I hand for that all the time. Oh, yeah. I had a gun, I thought, at least I'd, in my own mind. <laughs> the world needs tight ends as well. They do. You, You're right. You fit that role well. First and 10 now out of the timeout. Kings is the motion man. They'll fake the pitch and go to Kings with it. Sidesteps a tackler down inside the 20 to the 16-yard line, tackled there by A.J. Hendy. Normally, R.J. Shelton would be that jet sweep kind of player, and right now they're getting Kings involved, and I don't blame him. He's a shifty back, someone that can get up the field, making people miss. I think that's the best attribute for him is when he catches the football, he's got, a, he's got an opportunity to make a defender miss in space. 37 trips with 26 touchdowns in the red zone this year for Michigan State. Holmes will line up as a wideout down to the bottom of your screen. The keeper for the quarterback, O'Connor, wrapped up right around the line of scrimmage. You can do got him. And I'm not really sure uh, what plays they're running offensively that would say Connor Cook could do these things. So. Red zone opportunities come up for Michigan State. You think of their tight ends. They have two, three tight end state uh, sets. Number 82, Josiah Price broke the record here. He leads all tight ends in the history of Michigan State with 15 touchdown catches. He'll be a one-on-one -on -one target on the backside of this play, potentially. Five TDs on the season. O'Connor rolls out. The pass complete. Down to about the 11-yard line, caught by R.J. Shelton, the junior, out of Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Last week, a big catch at the end in the fourth quarter for R.J. Shelton. Had some drops early in the game, trying to get him the football early on. They're going to go quick tempo here on first and ten. They can still pick up the first down down at the one-yard line. On a drive with their backup quarterback, Tyler O'Connor, with Connor Cook apparently healthy but standing on the sideline next to his head coach. More jet sweep action. Shelton looking for a block. Wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. And it was number seven, Yannick Ngakwe, who got there. Well, right now, you know, I'm watching this offense. You're in the red zone, OK? This is a game where this team needs to get their fuel on offense going. You got your second string quarter in, quarterback in after an, uh, a fumble by Maryland. And I'm kind of questioning myself, why is this Connor Cook not in the game right now. I know they're trying to get some guys on the field and get some work, but to have your backup quarterback in off a turnover in the red zone, 
scratching my head on that one, Beth. They'll go with two tight ends, both to the left side of the line. Holmes motions to the right. O'Connor looking, searching, throwing to the end zone. Touchdown, McGarrett Kings. And at the end of the day, that's not why I'm a coach. Because he leads him down and gets a touchdown. Connor does a nice job. He was off on his first pass. Kind of dials himself in. Getting a high five from his starting quarterback, Connor Cook. First touchdown throw of the season for O'Connor as he finds McGarrett Kings and Michigan State. With its backup quarterback goes 50 yards in four minutes and 45 seconds. They need 10 plays to do it on the short field and they get points off of the turnover with the fumble recovery that started it all. O'Connor shredded down, getting a chance. 50, but it was Maryland that got the win, 34 to seven. You wanna buy a program, by the way, today in Spartan Stadium? It'll cost you 10 bills. <laughs> Will Likely, dangerous kick return man. And will he get his hands on it? He will. From inside the five. Likely keeping the play alive as a flag flies. Likely still on his feet to the 23-yard line. And let's get you back to the studio for an update. All right, Beth, to Anthony, while you guys sort out that flag, it's time for a Taco Bell studio update. Purdue at Northwestern. Wildcats scored on their first possession, but here come the Boilermakers. Dominique Young. Hauls in this pass from David Blau, 68 yards, all tied up at seven apiece in the first. Beth? 48. At the distance to the goal, first down. Thank you very much, Chris. Coming back with the uh, penalty they, there, Maryland had a block in the back, so that'll set them back. Well, unfortunately for Maryland, turnovers have been the story for this mm -hmm. for this football team this year. 30 coming in, into the game, worst in the FBS, add another one with the fumble. And l listen, the quarterback position, not a big throwing type of style offense with this team. I just think, to me, everything's going to rely on number 11, running the football, finding those holes. And he's had good protection with three-man rushes. I think you can get those seams and make big plays with your legs. Play action with Brandon Ross. Hills throwing deep down the middle, and he's got a man at the 45-yard line. Lee Vern Jacobs hauls it in. The accuracy may not be there, but when they hit it, Anthony, they can hit it big. Well, here's the thing. Your pass rush needs to get to the quarterback. If you don't get to the quarterback, Hills is going to have some open receivers again. Going after the young, strong safety, Grayson Miller, number 44, in space. That's a tough matchup, one-on-one, -on -one for the true freshman strong safety. 37 yards to Jacobs, and Hills had pressure in his face. And let's get you down to Paul Carcaterra. How Michigan State would respond after a heartbreaking loss to Nebraska. That was the big question all week in East Lansing. Riley Bulla said this week, their starting middle linebacker, we will bounce back. I can assure you of that. We're going to play our tails off. And coaches and players, they all feel like they control their own destiny. Still can win the East and the Big Ten Championship. Paul Riley, Bill, uh, Bull of the latest in a long line of family members to play college football, many of them here at Michigan State. Hills hit as he releases. What a grab behind his back. By number 85, Javaris Davenport. Lawrence Thomas was the guy bringing pressure on the quarterback. Again, defensive line has to get that pressure. On third down, the give is to Brandon Ross, and he appears to have the first down yardage down inside the 45, and they will go ahead and move the chains. Keeping Michigan State's defense on their heels, speeding this up, trying to put stress on their defensive backs. Hills incomplete, looking for Davenport again. Well, uh, buttoning up uh, what Paul Carcaterra was talking about, they do control their own destiny. Still a chance to beat two unbeaten teams, two teams that are ranked in the top five this week in Ohio State and Iowa. Yeah, Ohio State next week, not to look forward to them, but you're right, they do control themselves as far as their destiny in the Big Ten, and if you could beat two top five teams at the end of the season, that speaks volumes to the college football committee. 
It could help them if uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes stayed unbeaten into that Big Ten championship game. But certainly uh, it will all hinge on today and, and obviously at Ohio State next Saturday. Finger pointing along the front line as flags fly. That'd be Craig Evans, number 72, potentially stepping into the neutral zone, making offensive linemen move. All side. Defense, number 72. Five-yard penalty, second down. Joel Heath, who suffered an ankle injury against Nebraska last week, was going to be limited today. So their interior defensive linemen, they've got some younger guys in there. And some more inexperienced guys. That's the second offside penalty on Michigan State. Second and five. into the belly of Brandon Ross and he powers his way down to the 30 yard line and a first down perhaps inspired by the fact he lost his starting gig today Hills with the ball fake takes a hard hit from Grayson Miller coming up from the secondary and then lends him a helping hand Right now, this, this fast pace has got Michigan State kind of moving around, not in the proper position. We talked about some young guys playing. Craig Stevens uh, trying to find his way to line up. They got to get set. Maryland right now trying to catch him off guard. Goes on second and three, gets a terrific block by Ross to buy some time and then finds his man inside the 10 yard line. Levern Jacobs with the catch and a big collision between Brandon Ross and Shalik Calhoun and Calhoun is the injured player. Yeah, chop block hits him in the shin there. And again, his own player chasing down the quarterback runs over him. It's a great job, great catch by Jacobs. Didn't get a lot of play time last week being a game time decision. Boy, it looked like Calhoun started to get up and then immediately collapsed back down to the turf. And his own player ran into him when he was trying to get up. Hopefully he can get back in this game. We talked about him being an impact player. He's a key cog to this defensive line. Former Big Ten Defensive Lineman of the Year, the 250-pound senior, one of their top sack men in history. Yeah, you'll see him on the outside gets cut and then... Malik McDowell is chasing down the quarterback and, and runs him over basically as he tried to jump over him. So I think that cut was the main thing. Takes a helmet on that shin area. See if he can bounce back and get back on the football field. So now you've got two defensive linemen that are starters that are now out with Calhoun and Heath. Looks like Cooper is on to replace Calhoun. Similar body style, 6'5", 250. There's a lot of things like Calhoun just doesn't have the experience. Will Likely is in the slot to the right for Maryland, and now he'll go in motion. Hills looking for Likely. He's got him. And Likely trying to make a move, lunging for the end zone, and he's in. Touchdown, Maryland. How about that drive that started back on their own nine yard line as they pick up the tempo and drive it in for six. Love the play here. Question is, did he get in? Any part of his the knee on the touched field the ground? Was a touchdown. Previous yeah. play nope. is under further review. Uh, his knee looks like it might be on the ground there right before. They'll definitely check that out. Very close. The black uniforms is right there. It's down. To rewind that just a little bit. We'll get a really good shot of it. Looks short if they call him. Where's his knee? Right there. His yeah. knee is down. So is the ball over the line? There it's a we don't have a straight, straight angle. Th this one, I think it's more significant that uh, he is coming up a bit short. Yep, yeah, right there. Knee hits. Ball is slightly short. Good eyes. See if the referees agree. What a play call. I, I love it. And we talked about him. He's a dangerous player. They have him in the slot most of the time. They run the jet sweep with them. There they fake that jet sweep. Run a little out and in route. Had the big boys in front of them, almost like an interior 
screenplay to him. But he is explosive. 5'7", gets a lot of Brett reps, wide receiver, return man, defensive back. After further review, the runner was down prior to ending the end zone. The ball will be placed at the half-yard line, second down on the right hash. The clock will start on the ready for play. So the call has been reversed. Take the six points off the board, and it's second down for Maryland. Paul? Good news for Michigan State. Defensive end, Shalik Calhoun, 89 in green. He's back in. It was actually his right hip area. Trainers evaluated it. He's back on the field. Down the goal line, left guard, number 55, Ryan Doyle is their best offensive lineman. Their power back, Ross, touchdown. And he gets that big down block. And Ross, the senior, gets himself a touchdown. Everybody tight splits with the offensive lineman, get a good block by the fullback. Number 33, Stefanelli. The old school players making it happen in that power run play there. Great drive by Maryland. Kept them on their heels, drove down the field, and answered the call with their touchdown themselves. And it's not their All-American, Brad Craddock, who was hurt last week. Uh, their place kicker today, Adam Green. Another attempt the extra point, and it is good. 91 yards in 10 plays, two and a half minutes. We are tied at seven. Will the Spartans send out Connor Cook at quarterback? We'll find out when we return after Brandon Ross ties it up for the Terps. A good reminder to say thanks this time of year, Veterans Day on uh, Wednesday, and a lot of uh, veterans are on hand today being honored here at Michigan State. We are even at seven apiece after Maryland's longest drive of the year. They went 91 yards in 10 plays to tie it up. R.J. Shelton and Delton Williams are back deep now for Michigan State. Shelton from the five, finds a seam out across the 35 and taken out of bounds at the 40-yard line. 36 yards on the return. Well, it's Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart, and we have perhaps the game of the day. It's number 12, Oklahoma, undefeated number six, Baylor. It's tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Can the Bears stay undefeated, or can the Sooners get right back into the championship chase as Connor Cook returns at quarterback he was not out there for their touchdown drive. Instead, it was Tyler O'Connor, the backup. So Cook returns with L.J. Scott at tailback. Now to throw on first down, and it's incomplete low to McGarrett Kings, who has the 10-yard touchdown catch earlier in the quarter. He's been the favorite target early. And you know, listen, I, I might also, you know, they've had a couple decommits in some of the recruits. One, most notably, Andre Risen's son, former receiver here. His son's a four-star wide receiver. And, you know, maybe they want to show who the future is. I mean, listen, Connor Cook's been playing quarterback a long time here. If you want to keep some of these recruits, especially a four-star type of wide receiver, you better show a quarterback so he might get some more snaps in this game. We'll, we'll keep a track of And second and ten, Cook out of the gun. Good protection for Cook. Throwing it downfield, and it's caught by Shelton inside the 40. Chris Cotter with a Horned Frogs up there. Chris? Yeah, Beth, let's go to Fort Worth. In a beautiful stadium, Amy Carter Stadium, and this is a beautiful punt return. Devontae Turpin, the diminutive one, listed 5'9", 165, takes it to the right, gets a couple of nice blocks, spin move, little juke move right there, and Another move back to the inside. By this time, he sees the purple end zone. Ten to nothing frogs right now, late first. Well, Chris, a uh, major development here at Michigan State. An injury to Connor Cook, the quarterback who had just re-entered the game on this series after sitting one out on the sideline, takes a hard hit and thrown down into the turf awkwardly. Jesse Anna Bonham hit him on the release. And in the last two series that he's played, 
He's been hit three times flush by three different defenders. And right there, lands with his arm into the ground first. And it looks like it lodges his shoulder there. So again, O'Connor into the game. O'Connor, who led them on the touchdown drive earlier, gives to L.J. Scott, taken down at the 31, and there's a flag in the backfield as Cook tries to shake it off. They were looking at his right shoulder. You see him tapping Holding. it there for the athletic Offense. trainers. Number 74, 10-yard penalty, first down. That's going to be a hold on Jack Conklin. Checking the uh, strength there, the rotator cuff is those exercises you see there. That's the most common thing you're doing with a quarterback is, you know, see if it's still tight. Was the rotator cuff potentially stretched out? They're massaging the area. Again, for a quarterback, when you're a right-handed quarterback, we'll see if he gets back into this football game. He's a highly ranked player. Obviously, Todd McShay thinks he's three. I think he's a lot. You know, he potentially could be the top guy taken, in my opinion, on his play so far this season. Already on his resume, the most wins for a starting quarterback in Michigan State history. He's 31 and 4. O'Connor on the run, drops it off to Josiah Price, his tight end. Connor Cook's in a lot of pain, but he just demanded a ball right now. He wants to see how it feels when he throws with that right shoulder, though. It is his throwing shoulder, Anthony. He's on the sideline right now, warming up. He is throwing, but invisible pain. Thank you, Paul. He had really been coming on of late in the passing game. Three or four consecutive 300-yard passing games. The Michigan State record. He's been really good throwing the ball deep, making this offense a threat. And O'Connor incomplete behind R.J. Shelton on that throw. Tyler O'Connor, we mentioned the touchdown earlier, his first of the season. This is only his fourth appearance of the year. I had not thrown a pass this year, this season. That was his first opportunity. A little pressure squeezed the pocket. He had to step up and make an accurate throw. Threw it slightly behind the receiver on that pass route. So again, came out, had a nice drive off the turnover. Starting so far five for seven in this football game. Let's see if he can get something generated here. But again, that third and 20, not the uh, best play call for the coordinator. It's coming from Brooks. It's picked up at the backside, and Gakwe able to fight through Jack Conklin for the sack. He is now one sack shy of the Maryland single season record as he picks up his 12th of the year, and it's a loss of seven. The use of his hands, knocking down, you see on the top of your screen, the best left tackle of Michigan State's football team, Jack Conklin, just gets around him with speed, brings him down. He is a menace on the outside. And again, look at likely shutting down Burbridge here. Right on him, nowhere for the quarterback to go. But when you see all those bodies up front coming on the pass rush, you have to have an internal clock with some speed right there holding the football, giving a defensive end a chance to win his one-on-one -on -one battle. Likely will let it drop over his head, and it's down at the five-yard line by Michigan State and Chris Fry, a 48-yard punt. Well, we are tied at seven here in the first quarter, and for Michigan State, the defense in uh, the last four years, one of the best in the country. And this season, a different story, giving up uh, a touchdown more per game to opponents. The passing game in particular has been suspect, nearly 250 yards per game, and the big plays, we've already seen a 37-yard pass on that touchdown drive for, Mich uh, for uh, Merrill. Six different lineups in the secondary. That causes problems for a defensive coordinator. A defensive line collectively that's not getting it hits on the quarterback. Right now, the only stable part of this defense is their linebackers. Will likely slotted to the right. Play action, they go to Likely. He's got a blocker out there on the wing, dodging his way out across the 10 yard line behind the block of Damian Prince. Last week against Nebraska, Michigan State's defense struggled against bubble passes to the receivers on the perimeter and the jet sweep action and containing those big plays on the outside of the edges. So those are two things I'm sure we'll see today as this game unfolds. Well, 
coach Mike Loxley comes from the offensive side. He's got head coaching experience as well out of New Mexico State. Showing a different look for the Terps. It's Wes Brown who fumbled earlier. He gets another opportunity. John Reschke with the tackle here in the final minute of this first quarter. Well, today on ESPN, some big games coming your way. It's Oklahoma State, Iowa State, presented by Cars.com. That's at 3.30. And then tonight, presented by Hilton Hotels, it's LSU and Arkansas. They're also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Third and five. Dangerous with his legs here at the quarterback position. Throws, throws, and it is dropped at the 20. Incomplete. It was Darian Hicks who is coming back from an injury, missed the last three games, but he's able to break up the pass intended for DJ Moore. Some good pressure on the quarterback here. Again, tight coverage. DB falls down. They're very fortunate. He gets back up, finds the football, makes a play on it. But Perry, Perry Hill's arm was hit at the line of scrimmage. The ball came out and was disrupted by the pass rush of the defensive line. Punt is away from Nicholas Pritchard, and it's short. As time expires in this first quarter, Michigan State will be in great shape. to start the second, just 32 yards on that punt. Well, Michigan State looking to bounce back from a tough loss last weekend. They cash in on a turnover early, but then thrown down into the turf, injured his right shoulder. He went over to the sideline, got some attention from uh, the athletic trainers, and you can see the pain as they tried to work on that shoulder. And Connor We'll head back out there with the short field here after the punt. It's L.J. Scott on the carry. Ball is out. Ball is out. Maryland says they've got it. And they do as Michigan State turns it over for just the sixth time this year. That is only their third fumble of the season. Yeah, you can do. Does a nice job. Number 95 coming across the top at the defensive tackle position and poking this football out for Maryland. And listen, Maryland's been the one turning, turning the ball over. Now they get themselves an opportunity. L.J. Scott, the true freshman, has got to latch onto that football. But again, a huge momentum boost for this Maryland football team right now who just went right down the score, uh, field and scored last possession. After they got off to a slow start last week against Nebraska, they had talked to us yesterday about getting off much quicker, and that has not been the case. And now it's Maryland with the short field. Hills play action, and down he goes. Swarmed by a couple of defenders. Riley Bullock was the guy leading the charge, and a loss of five. It's a good job. They bring a double eight gap blitz. Cross dog. They're going to bring this backer on the outside and the, around the other way. And number 30, Bull is going to get to the quarterback here after he beats his one on one tackle. Fiery competitor. It's been their most stable linebacker, him and Harris. Number 45, a nice game to confuse the Maryland offensive line. Four and a half sacks on the season for Bully, who's also their leading tackler. And a big hit from Calhoun on Brandon Ross to break up the pass attempt, and it's third and 15. Those instincts at the defensive line position, you see the experience there. Comes out of his rush. He comes and picks up the back, sees him flaring out of the backfield. Those are the things he brings to the table. Former first team Big Ten, two-time first team Big Ten defensive player. See how aggressive they get here on third and long. Calhoun. On the left side of the D-line. They're rushing a few backers as well. 
Maryland able to pick it up in the pass incomplete behind Avery Edwards, the freshman tight end out of North Carolina. And it's fourth down. Earlier in the game, you saw Hills throw a down the field post route with no pressure on his face. This defense for Michigan State immediately brings blitz packages to speed up Hill's process. And because of that, he throws a quick port pass over the middle. And I think right now you're starting to see what the game plan is going to be for this Michigan State defense moving forward in this game. So neither side able to take advantage of that short field. Pritchard, the punt, and it is a shank off the side of his foot, and it will barely get out to midfield. 11 yards on that punt by Pritchard. And again, Michigan State will only have to go 50 yards for a score. Right off the side of the foot and bouncing out of bounds and Pritchard unhappy with the outcome. Antonio wanted to see some intensity from his team today. Is he getting it right now, Anthony? Well, that's what I would question right now. You get a, your best left uh, player at the offensive line, Conklin, gets beat on a one-on-one -on -one pass rush, gives up a big sack, and then you come out the next series and fumble on the first play. Right now, they got to get their act together on offense and put together a drive against Maryland. They are playing with an injured quarterback, Connor Cook. He will hand it off to Madre London. And uh, speaking of those Buckeyes, how about an update from Chris Cotter? All right, Beth, over on ABC Ohio State at Illinois. And it's JT Barrett back after his serving his one-game suspension. Beautiful pass here, finding Michael Thomas, the physical receiver for the Buckeyes. 24 yards, 7 0 Ohio State in Champaign. Thank you very much, Chris, as the Buckeyes try and extend that 22-game uh, winning streak as they get set to host uh, the Spartans next weekend. Big Saturday of football coming up next week. Shelton in motion. He's got the ball down to about the 46-yard line. Tackled there by A.J. Hendy. We talked about Connor Cook, obviously, with that shoulder issue. Hasn't thrown a pass yet. I'm interested to see the zip and velocity of a potential throw on this uh, third down and six opportunity again. A lot of safe throws in this area. Tight ends in particular. Talked about Josiah Price, Jamal Lyles. See if they can get a quick target throw here to get his arm and, and track and see how he feels. State two for four on third downs today. Will Likely is not in there defensively right now. Cook looking for Kings. And is he able to hold? 20-yard line, he is. Ruled a catch for McGarrett Kings. First down, Spartans. Wow, what concentration to pull that one in. And when they bring blitz packages, you're going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Again, the ball's in his body. He's able to pull it in. One-armed, little Odell Beckham-esque there. That's definitely going to be one of our Sports Center top tens. Kings playing big at 5'10", but he went up high for that 50-50 ball. And they went after Will Likely's backup, Darnell Savage, as Likely quickly returns to the game. On first down, London slips free of a tackle in the backfield, and down he goes around the 15-yard line. Back to this terrific one-handed grab by Kings. Savage doesn't even see the football, and Kings tracks it perfectly on the outside. And again, when you get that one-on-one -on -one coverage, can you go make a catch? Great concentration, and you're right, likely back in the game. And here's the problem. If you're playing offense, you're playing special teams, you're playing defense, <laughs> yeah. when do you get this kid a break? The one time they get him, they check to a pass to the outside, and they take advantage of it with Kings. Likely will come to the near side. He's been shadowing Aaron Burbridge much of the day. I don't think Aaron's got a catch yet. Cook, boy, they're throwing everything at the quarterback. His pass incomplete to London. And Cook goes down again back at the 30-yard line. Jesse Anabonum was the first guy there along with Tyler Burke, one of their linebackers. It's early in the second quarter. That's about the fourth or fifth hit now on a quarterback. And the, uh, the 
a few times ago, he hurt his shoulder, so they got to really be cautious. Like you said, the blitzes are going to be coming today from Maryland. Uh, that actually could take the tight ends out of the football game if you got to have an extra defender to protect against some of these seven, six or seven man rushes that they're bringing right now against Michigan State. Third and six. The fake to Kings. Cook down to the goal line and it's incomplete. Looking for his tight end price broken up by A.J. Hendy and it's fourth down. Cooks had to put that ball in the air early. Again, with that pressure coming, the tight end not getting his head around late because trying to position himself and track the football. Good job by Hendy getting up high and knocking that ball away against Josiah Price, their top red zone target for Michigan State. It's a very experienced secondary for Maryland as Hendy gets the break up. This is a 32-yard attempt from Michael Geiger, who's 7 of 11 on the season, and they fake it. They give it right back to the kicker, and he is slammed to the turf by Tucker. Interesting play call there. Again, your snapper has a looping defender coming across his face, number 78, Tucker, and he can't be blocked. That's the problem. The one guy that has his head between his legs can't see with the defender in the middle of the field right over the center hard to block him when you're snapping it busted blown up play for maryland another huge momentum builder for this football team we had a winning season so i was happy everybody uh, did well <laughs> Merry Christmas, Coach. Hey, can you guys come in for a sec? Okay. What is this? We forgot to give you one of our presents. To me? Yeah, we left it in the car. Let's see what we have here. These are like you used to wear. <laughs> Before there could be a nation, there had to be people willing to fight for it, to take on the world's greatest challenges, whatever they might be. So the U.S. Army masters not only tactics and strategy, but also physics and chemistry. We make battle plans and create breakthroughs in medicine, science, and engineering. Our next mission could be anything, so we prepare for everything. Now with no monthly payments until 2016, bring home the go-kart handling of the mini hardtop. Fit more friends with the hardtop four-door. Or the bigger mini countryman with available all-wheel drive. Bring home your mini today the Zero for 15 mini sales event with zero hassles and zero holdups. It's all thrills and no monthly payments until 2016. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Saluting the American uh, military a few days after Veterans Day earlier in the week. And some fans showing their uh, colors, some military folks showing their colors from around the world. Celebrated here today as well as we get back to the action in a 7-7 game. First down, Hills will keep. Let's go back to the fake field goal just a minute ago that was stuffed. Well, you're right, it was stuffed. The, the problem is, is your snapper has a looping defender coming around. And of course, of course, this is going to be a home run. Watch this hole open up. Stop it right there. You see this green grass? Yeah. It's there, but when you have the looper coming around the snapper, his head's between his legs. He cannot see the defender, and they have no one to account for him to block. It would have been a 32-yard field goal attempt for Geiger. So Michigan State cannot put points on the board, and Shalik uh, Calhoun 
I think this is their third offside penalty All for the D-line. Defense, number 89. Five-yard penalty, second down. That's your senior right there. You're all Big Ten guy, and you see, look at the, whew, from Mark D'Antonio. It's been that kind of first half for Michigan State. Unable to get any separation from a Maryland team that is winless in the Big Ten and have lost six in a row. Second and six. This may be a broken play. Hills will try and create. He turned to hand it off, and Brown ran the other way. And Hills is taken down at the 25 yard line. It'll be third down. Reschke and Evans were there to make the hit. Uh, this might have been on the quarterback because uh, it looked like we had all routes being run on the outside. The back goes quickly to pick up a blitzer. It was well done. Just Hills wasn't on the same page. Again, right now, third and five. Michigan State defense has brought pressure and disrupted the quarterback to me if I'm Hills if there's a seam to run you can make a big play with your legs don't force the issue if you have to throw they will roll out Hills and his pass incomplete looked like Levern Jacobs had a couple of hands on it and it was knocked out of there by Demetrius Cox and it's fourth down Terps now one for four on third downs here in the first half. Again, rolling him to the left is always tough for a right-handed quarterback. And he was inaccurate on that pass, throwing it behind his receiver. Well blocked out front, but to me, talk about a quarterback that struggles passing. Rolling him to the left is not a, an advantageous event. And after that shank punt a few moments ago from Maryland, they go with a new punter. It's Lee Schrader. And he has a wobbly first effort. And that will not make it to midfield. It takes a Spartan bounce. And it's out of bounds at the 44-yard line. After an 11-yard punt, they follow it up with a 19-yard punt. Michigan State football when we come back. Now with no monthly payments until 2016, bring home the goal. Undefeated. Shoot, looking for a bounce back this week. Today at 3.30, Oklahoma State, Iowa State, then at 7.15, Arkansas, LSU on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Texans, Bengals at 8.15, Monday on ESPN. Welcome back, and it's been a rough day today so far for Connor Cook, taking a lot of hits, not many sacks, but he's taking shots by this Maryland defense. Max protection has to shore up for this team, or they have to find their hot routes, but if they don't, they're going to continue to hit on these quarterbacks for Michigan State. They will start for uh, the second time today in Maryland territory. Their average drive start position out near midfield and yet they only have the seven points to show for it this their sixth possession and the pass complete to Burbridge his first catch how about an update from Chris Cotter all right Beth Connor Cook not the only starting quarterback injured on this day look at Trevon Boykin here gonna get sacked as TCU's taken on Kansas he would limp off the field go to the locker room and would not return Bram Kohlhausen now under center for the Frogs 10-10 in that game Thank you, Chris. So uh, they lose last week for the first time to Oklahoma State and now may have lost their quarterback. And look at this scrum and the push forward for Michigan State and Gerald Holmes. He's coming off his career high effort last week, 117 yards against Nebraska in the loss. And the fans here love the effort. Well, that's what they need. This is the intensity we're talking about. You get a great job by their left tackle, Benny McGowan, pulling around. You got tight ends filling in the hole. And Gerald Holmes continued to turn his legs and get this crowd fired up, get the momentum going for this football team, 7-7. And they've had tremendous field position. Like you said, something's got to get this team to click right now. Maybe it's that run. 14-yard run. That's their longest of the day.
Holmes are trying to set him up to their right side. Cannot get out to the edge, and he's thrown down by Quinton Jefferson, the junior out of Pittsburgh. Well, right now, the, this defensive line for Maryland, I think, is, is very stout up front, and they play the edge as well. Running that perimeter run game, as you saw, got stuff there. Could be tough when you got good defensive ends like Yannick Ngangwe on the outside, number seven. So to me, that power run game is that inside run. You saw the big play there just before that run. Stick with it. That's what they talk about. Even when you show it, you still got to go out there and make those blocks. And a huge hole was opened up the last time they ran power. Edge pressure coming on second and 13. Cook tried to drop it off underneath to Burbridge, down to Paul Carcaterra. Beth, I've been monitoring Connor Cook every time he comes off the sideline and in between plays. He's still in a lot of pain, make no mistake about it. He's constantly moving that shoulder around. He's massaging his right shoulder with his left arm. And you wouldn't know it by that McGarrett King's pass and catch possession ago, but I also overheard him talk to Tyler O'Connor, the other quarterback, when he came off the field last time. He said, I'm just not getting enough time. Now Paul is three for nine on the day, just 55 yards. O'Connor is five for seven in his work. Cook on third down, lofting it down inside the five, and up to intercept it is Anthony Nixon. Connor Cook underthrows a football to the uh, outside running back. Gerald Holmes is going to line out in motion, and he's going to get that one-on-one -on -one coverage with number 20, the strong safety, Nixon. Five turnovers in nine games for Michigan State, and now two of them here in the first half. Connor Cook's arm getting banged up early in this game. Short arms his receiver to the outside. Big interception for Maryland as they take advantage. Sunday edition. Connor Cook continues to try and work through the pain. The injured right shoulder. And as Maryland will start out deep in its own territory off of the interception. Twice Michigan State has started out in Turk territory, and twice they've turned it over. Yeah, only five turnovers the entire season on offense. They protected the wall, but today, a fumble, an interception. That's only Connor Cook's fourth of the season. And for Michigan State, boy, coming in, they were amongst the best in the country, plus 11. It was a rarity to cough the ball up, but Maryland has the advantage. And now a fourth offside penalty on the Spartans here. Well, you know, they've done a nice job, Maryland, of mixing up the snap count. And you can see here they got a lot of checked up knees. you got to stay in and focus on the football for a defensive lineman for Michigan State. And the eye formation, Wes Brown out to the nine-yard line. You see a little hangover right now from last yep. week. The focus and coaches talked about it. It took them longer to get over the week because of that play and reevaluating the situation last week. And, and, and they expected their players and their senior leaders to step this football team up and get them past that hurdle. And right now, you see the lack of focus on both sides of the football, and it's keeping Maryland in this football game. Second and two. Bulla with the blitz. Hills gets the pass away, but it's incomplete. Looking for Kenneth Goins, and it's third down. You're seeing pressure on both sides. Trying to get to the quarterback, disrupt it. Rescue does a nice job just blowing things up at the linebacker position, making it, making it tough for the quarterbacks. Right now, you got to watch the football. If you're a defensive lineman, get off. And if you bring pressure here, get to the quarterback and speed up his evaluating process, getting the ball out of his hands. Hills has missed on his last five throws. He's got five wides. Hills fires, it's caught right around the 13, the forward progress out to the 14-yard line and a first down for Malcolm Comer, the junior out of Willingboro, New Jersey, and now Perry Hills as he touches his midsection is slow to get up. It's a big hit from John Reschke. Yeah, they bring the pressure again. See those hits, helmet right on his rib area. 
That's definitely got to hurt. You're exposed as a player. It's a hot read throw, so you don't have a de an offensive player to pick him up in that blitz. But again, it's never a good feeling. Mm, taking a helmet right to that rib area. I hope he's okay. Tremendous job of getting the ball out of his hands. He had to throw it awkwardly, seeing that pressure in his face. I'll give him credit for that, standing in there and delivering a football on that pressure. Hills is the junior from Pittsburgh uh, who has started their last four games. He missed three games in late September, early October. Their other quarterback, Caleb Rowe, has seen extensive uh, action. The senior out of South Carolina. And then last season, it was ACL, came back this year. He is a pure pocket passer, folks. There is no running in Caleb Rowe's ammunition in his, in his repertoire he's not going to bring there that too much so again if you're talking about pressure which michigan state's done the one thing he does do is he can let plays develop and the routes get open so if you don't get to him he could be a problem but he's been a turnover machine this year and it's been been a struggle at the quarterback position in that phase just 43 percent accuracy he's got 13 interceptions to go with his five touchdowns well keep it on the ground and almost put it on the ground the juggling effort by Brandon Ross to haul it back in a loss of a couple well, again not having those reps and it looks like it's going to be one and done so far Hills looks like he's coming in so uh, potentially uh, they can get back on track and, and get their offense going I think that they've done a nice job so far likely is also into the game he is slotted to the left yep, right on the inside, inside the guy and he'll more than likely come across the field many times in this football game. Going to run a little option with Will Likely to the short side of the field, and he is slammed down around the 14. Lawrence Thomas would have none of that, and it's third and 10. Yeah, Lawrence Thomas, 6'4", 305 pounds, really is a imposing-looking player on the football field. They just needed every down from him. Again, we talked about the defensive line. That leadership starts with their ends, Lawrence Thomas and Calhoun being the seniors, and they need to come up big on this third down and long for Maryland. Will Likely is out now for the Terps. Against a six-man rush, Hills. Taken down to the turf, back in the end zone by Darian Harris as the pass flies incomplete, and it's fourth down. So who's going to come out and kick here for the Terps? Nicholas Pritchard had an 11-yard punt. Lee Schrader came on to replace him with a 19-yard punt. And it is back to Lee Schrader now for the second time, the backup punter out of his own end zone this time. wobbly effort as the Spartans scatter. Maryland will knock it out of bounds. It will be the third time in the first half that Michigan State will start in Maryland territory. That one just a 29-yard punt. Well, this college football Saturday, put one game on the big screen. How about another one on your computer and your tablet and your smartphone? Use Watch ESPN. Just download the app or go to watchespn.com. Got some terrific games coming up throughout the day. Oklahoma and Baylor, the one primetime tonight on ABC. But coming up in the next window, you can catch top-ranked Clemson, or how about Michigan, Indiana, or can Oklahoma State stay undefeated? The throw down inside the 10-yard line, incomplete. Intended for uh, McGarrett Kings. A.J. Hendy had the uh, coverage. I've been impressed by Oklahoma State. I actually had them in my top four. I liked them at three. The fact that they didn't jump Baylor, it was the most impressive win by any Big 12 team, in my opinion, to date. So, again, they're getting some respect, but the Big 12, obviously, as they start playing each other and someone can stand up, I think Oklahoma State's got a great chance after that win against TCU. Well, you go back four years, Iowa State spoiled undefeated Oklahoma State's championship bid in that stunning upset a few years back. And they do it again. Cook will step up and incomplete to R.J. Shelton. Connor Cook now 
Although that one didn't appear to be his fault. Three for 12 here in the first half fighting through a shoulder injury. Well, these receivers got to be ready for quick footballs. If you're going to bring pressure and you're down a man in protection, Connor Cook's going to get the ball out of his hands. And R.J. Shelton has to see the ball. A few drops last week. A little out of the order there with some of these guys. But you got to be prepared for quick throws, get your head around quickly, and protect the quarterback because Connor Cook's got to get it out of his hands right away. Most efficient passer in the Big Ten this year. And now it's third and ten. Cook steps up and runs into some traffic. And Yannick Ngakwe right there. And what appeared to be a designed run for the injured quarterback. Uh, I don't know if it was a designed run or not, but they only rushed four, which is the optimal protection scenario for this football team on offense. And they, they lose an opportunity. See here, they got some routes. Getting in, they got protection, but who's open? You gotta get yourself open. Right now, Maryland's defense doing a nice job. One with pressure, two with coverage, and we talked about that press coverage by these DBs. They've done a very good job so far in this game. Well, we'll likely get a chance to bust this game open. They're trying to kick it away from them, and they do, and it's out of bounds inside the 10. Jake Hartberger, terrific punt. And it will be down or out of bounds at the six yard line, a 39 yard effort, but the placement much more important than that. Maryland's offense right now, look, they're very fortunate as a team. 7-7, seven, seven, three, 321 left in this first half of football. You got to find a way to switch field position right now because they've been pinned back multiple times. That's scary against this Michigan State defense. Even though they're not playing their best football on the back end, it's been dangerous. But offensively, only 94 total yards. And for me, Hills has got to use his legs. When they're spread out in this five receiver look, if it's not there, he needs to find ways to make explosive plays with the lower part of his body. Likely slotted right, now in motion. Hills will keep, and Hills will make a play with his feet. Into the secondary, Perry Hills out across the 35-yard line and a first down. And the coordinator must have been listening How to me you, there. How about you, Well, here's the thing. I mean, that's what his, <laughs> that's what he is well known for. And if they get those three men rushing in the, at the defensive line, you get receivers blocking on the outside. You see the quickness and the ability to get up the field. That's how you change field position, and Maryland does it right there. Longest rush of the day, 31 yards. Now it's likely with a chance, caught from behind by Shalit Calhoun, and down he goes. Good job by Will Likely there, holding on to the football, because he had a 260-pound defensive end hanging on his arm there to try to rip that out. Good job of tucking that football. For a guy that doesn't get a lot of, per se, offensive reps, you know, he's supposed to get 10 to 15. He's a guy that they like playing. Injured player down for Maryland. And it is Michael Dunn, their left tackle. What's coming up at halftime, Chris? Okay, Beth, two minutes and 45 seconds of game time away from the Dave & Buster's halftime report. Butch Davis and Robert Smith will join me. We'll talk about JT Barrett making his return to the Buckeyes starting lineup there in action at Illinois. Gators have already salted away the SEC East. They get a tough road game at South Carolina. Highlights of those two. And Baylor, first test of the year tonight on ABC against Oklahoma. We'll give you a preview. That's coming up. Dave & Buster's halftime report. Beth? Well, looking forward to that. Chris and Butch and Robert back in the studio. Michael Dunn, who got rolled up on in that last play, the junior out of Bethesda, Maryland, trotting off to the sideline. Yeah, Calhoun, you'll see him right here get rolled up right by Likely, gets leg whipped. And that right leg, knee, ankle area gets caught underneath the defender, always tough in the trenches with these linemen. And again, uh, they're, they're not very deep. You know, this isn't a downhill punch in the mouth, one-on-one -on -one winning line line core for, for Maryland. They are more use athleticism, beat you with scheme, and uh, they don't have that depth right now that Loxley would like to have. And in fact, it's their right tackle, Ryan Doyle, who will now switch over to the left side to replace Dunn. Hills behind his intended receiver, the tight end, Edwards. And Ed Edwards is a guy that I actually worked with at IMG, and you see him coaching up the true freshman at the tight end. They say, listen, you see that you're running across the field and you see a defender in front of you settle down in the open space right there. Hills was trying to get him to settle into the into the zone. 
on that quick pass play. Again, legs if it's not there. Pressure's been coming for Michigan State in these third down scenarios. Right now, Michigan State showing corner blitz on the outside with Hicks. Here he comes. He's picked up by West Brown on the block, and the pass is intercepted. Riley Bulla will take it the other way, and a pick six for the Michigan State D. Tell you what, this is started by the pressure of Hicks on the outside. They show it, they're not hiding it, and he also finishes it too with a huge block. But again, this is the kind of things that Michigan State has missed big plays. And you know what? There's no bigger competitor on this football field than Riley Bulla. You want to talk about someone that studies film, understands linebacking position, and isn't in the right spots? It pays off right there on an interception. 44 yards on the interception return for the touchdown. The extra point is good from Michael Geiger. Their junior middle backer, one of their leaders, as the defense maligned last week for giving up their most yardage and their most points of the season in the loss to Nebraska. Now they come back with a score. Number 30 there in green. Yeah, you see Boa, number 30, get into the conversation and just reads the quarterback eyes. Now watch the block right here by number two, Hicks, after he comes off on the corner blitz. Bula knows what to do with the football. Big block right there. Again, huge turning point. Finally, when Maryland gets out of that, pushed back in there, deep in the zone, they finally get a big play. But it's been the demise, the interceptions. Another interception at the quarterback position. That's 26 now in the season total for the whole committee of the QBs and it really has taken this team to places that's that's been tough and they have not been able to overcome them so far this season. Will Likely is back to receive the kickoff from Kevin Cronin and a chance for Likely he's going to bring it out. And he will get out across the 15 but shy of the 20. And the defensive unit led by Buller will head back out there. It's a long line of Michigan State and Notre Dame guys. Hank Buller, his grandfather, was here. His dad, Shane Buller, played here at Michigan State. Some uncles with the Spartans in at Notre Dame. And first it was Max, and now it's Riley. And next up, the third string middle backer, his younger brother, Byron Buller. The last brother and the younger sister are due to arrive here in East Lansing next year. And I think that's the part of Bull's game that I really am impressed by is his coverage. We know he's a hard-nosed tackler. Last week gets an interception versus Nebraska. This week, again, falls back in coverage, reads eyes. He's done a tremendous job, the most stable position for this defense. pass out into the flat is a rule to catch and no they're going to say incomplete to Tavon Jacobs Anthony I know you're high on Riley Bull of 30 and green I've been watching this guy in warm-ups what he does in between possessions his motor does not stop coach D'Antonio said he is the Connor Cook of the defense the guy who makes the calls the guy who really ratches it up another level from an intensity standpoint but 30 is like the Energizer Bunny out here. You're right. No speech is going to motivate this kid. This guy's ready to go on game day. When it's Saturday comes around, he's focused and honed in, and he shows it there. Particularly important on a day when the offense has struggled a bit. Hills, under pressure, throws it away. Perry is now one for his last 11 attempts in just six yards. Get another cross dog. And again, they're just trying to get in his face with these linebackers, whether it's Reschke, Bulla. You see the intensity. You see him leading everywhere, getting them all lined up. That's the biggest thing for this football team. He's going to be in the line of scrimmage. You're showing blitz. Third and 10. Hills has been off target so far with the quick throws. It's been a recipe for the disaster for this Maryland team. Bulla will back off, but it's five guys coming. And that will give Hills a lane to run. And he runs into the grasp of Monte Nicholson. A seven yard gain, but he's short of the marker. Paul? 
You know, Beth, last time Lee Schrader was out there punting, he struggled. He's been struggling all half, the punting and kicking game for Maryland. So I heard Mike Loxley talk to him after that last shank of a punt. He said, relax, pretend you're the only person kicking in this stadium. Well, it's it's simple technique process. You got to catch the ball with your hands. You got to see the football off your foot and kick it. They do it a thousand times every single week. It's their one job, and it's always tough. Listen, you're a backup kicker. You're not really expecting to come in as a backup punter. But again, he gets a couple under his belt. Hopefully, he'll improve and gets an opportunity to maybe you know finish the season as the as the number one guy. These are his first punts of the season. And I don't know if that'll calm you down if you're thinking you're the only kicker in the stadium with 75,000 plus watching you. <laughs> You've shanked one 19 yards, another punt 29 yards, and there's a better effort from Schrader and the fair catch at the 41, McGarrett King. So Tuesday brings a special night for college basketball and football, and here's more. Chicago, my town, where past champions will clash. All I want is everything you got. Future champions will be decided. The Champions Classic and College Football Playoff Top 25, all live from Chicago Tuesday on ESPN. Ah, the voice of Mike Ditka from Chicago. So you got a hoops double header, and you've also got the reveal of the college football playoff rankings for next week. Cook on a crossing route and a big hit. Coming up from the secondary, A.J. Hendy on McGarrett Kings. Kings has been busy today. And he is a little slow to get up. I'll tell you what, these DBs for Maryland are dialed in with these blitzes. They are on point, in position to make tackles. I'll give them credit. You know, you talk about a team, this is their head coach. Dudzinski, the defensive coordinator, has opened it up. And they've become a, a dangerous weapon for this football team and, and really have kept them in games the last couple weeks. They've been playing loose. They've been playing with passion, as their coach has asked them to do. They are experienced in that secondary. They've seen a lot. There's the big hit on Kings, who will trot off the field. A lot to prove. They, they've lost 13 straight games to ranked opponents. They, they'd like to put some sort of stamp on this season. They know that the next coach coming in is probably going to be an offensive-minded guy. Cook's pass broken up by Likely, intended for Burbridge. He has kept Aaron quiet for much of the day. Well, Will Likely understands what it takes to be a corner. He's going to make plays on the football, and the fans are obviously thinking he got there. A little early on that play, but I think the one thing I've noticed from Connor Cook is at the end of games or right before the half, he's been sharp. And, you know, we, we know he's fallen on his shoulder today. Uh, the velocity and the strength, he underthrew a football today, earlier in this game with an interception. Can he convert the change in those pressure situations? That's where he stood out to me on tape. See if they can get something going here on this third down with pressure coming. Heat right up the middle. Cook. Ball hit, and his arm was hit as well as he tried to throw that pass, and that's that right shoulder. And again, it's Gimpy as he heads yeah. to the sideline. He tried to follow through when he couldn't. Well, they're going to have to change up their passing game right now because if you can't, if you go max coverage, you're going to get chances to go downfield. But if you're trying to go downfield with not enough protection, and right now Anthony Anthony Nixon comes inside, and they're just kind of getting away around the, the unblocked defender. I mean, they can't block everybody, and if you don't get the ball out of your hand quicker, they don't have routes built in to help them release the football fast. And, you know, Maryland's going to have an advantage right now, and those shots on Connor Cook are going to take their toll as this game's going on. They already have. Cook really fighting through the injury as this punt will go into the end zone for the touchback. 55 yards on that boot. Well, let's take a look at this week's rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Clemson Tigers stay on top of the pole at 9-0 there at Syracuse this afternoon, followed by Alabama, Ohio State, and Notre Dame are your four teams right now. Iowa at 5 and Baylor at 6. Of course, Michigan State of the one loss teams may have the best opportunity to move up because they could still potentially beat undefeated Ohio State. 
and then undefeated Iowa in the Big Ten Championship. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there's a lot on the table for this football team, and right now Caleb Rose in the football game at the quarterback position. Rose immediately greeted with an interception. Arjun Colhoun, seven yards after the pick, and Michigan State will have the ball right back. And you see Coach Loxley is not happy right now. Stretching the field, end of the half. And Colhoun, he dropped the key interception last week, wasn't able to finish off the game, but he finishes this one here. Just reading the seam route, watching the quarterback. Caleb Rowe just eyeballs this thing the entire time and steps in front. And again, new quarterback comes in, another interception. And for Coach Loxley trying to figure this whole thing out, you see him throw his arm up. It's not a good time right now to be a quarterback for Maryland if you're going to turn the football over. Third turnover, 33rd of the season. Connor Cook back in at quarterback to Aaron Burbridge. Pickup of seven down to the 28-yard line. Again, clock's ticking. Cook with time across the middle to Price, the tight end, and he's got the first down to stop the clock while they move the sticks. And this, down into the red zone. This is where that NFL type of quarterback comes out in these moments, leading down the field, clock management. Cook and a miscommunication there with Burbridge. Will likely again on the coverage. That marquee matchup out on the perimeter. Yeah, you're right. I like Will Likely. I think he's a heck of a player. He can test football. He's 5'7", but he plays big. And I'll tell you what, next, if he gets that opportunity, uh, he's, uh, he still uh, has another year to play. Yep. Being a junior, he's a guy that you know can go out there and compete and get better. He's definitely got a shot, at least getting into a camp maybe and, and defending uh, and living up to the expectations he's done here at college. Cook. Connor Cook will throw it away, and he takes another hit from Anthony Nixon. And it's third down and 10. Just to button up what you were talking about with Will Likely, he's now been on the field for 50 plays here in this first half, playing all three phases as the triple threat. And what do the Spartans do here with 11 seconds to go in the half? Well, Maryland has to be cautious here. I know they've been bringing the blitz, but sometimes you can get scorched by the blitz. And if I'm the coordinator for Michigan State, I'm trying to get a play in that if they do decide to come, they can get that receiver over the middle or fill those voids where strong safeties and linebackers are coming and maybe you catch a guy and get a big play. So right now, Maryland, if they can hold them to a field goal here, they, it feels like a win for them. And Michigan State's got to be smart. You don't want to take a sack. You do have a timeout, but you're in field goal range. Again, worst case scenario, you get a kick opportunity, go into halftime. You've got to make some major adjustments if you're the coordinator. You see right there, uh, Bowman. Yeah, Jim Bowman and Dave Warner. And Dave Warner. And again, Connor Cook, green grass on the back of his jersey is never a good sign if you're playing quarterback. And right now, Maryland getting to him on defense. They've cashed in on the two previous turnovers for their 14 points. Can they get another score? They're three of nine on third down here in the first half. Looking towards the trips right. Now back to the left. Burbridge behind the defender and couldn't hang on. They got what they wanted. They got the coverage on the outside. They got protection. Connor Cook. Starts right, comes back left. Burbage does a nice job running the route. Covered by Likely. Look at him. Wow. I'll tell you what, that's a heck of a job by Likely at the line of scrimmage. Burbridge, though, that's an even better job at getting off the ground and going. Ball's right in his hands, though. And I'll tell you what, getting knocked on the ground, you'll lose focus as a wide receiver getting punched like that. Trying to gather yourself, that definitely had something to do with it. Geiger, 35-yard attempt, and it's good. All 17 points. Off of turnovers for Michigan State in the first half and a 17-7 lead over Maryland. We'll hear from Paul Carcaterra with coach Mark D'Antonio coming up with the Dave & Buster's halftime report. Let's get you now to Chris Cotter, Butch Davis, and Robert Smith in the studio.
of Maryland. All 17 of those points have come off of turnovers for Michigan State here in this first half, and they lead it by 10. Beth Mullins, along with 12-year NFL veteran Anthony Beck, Paul Carcaterra is also with us. It was a rough first half offensively th for the Spartans. Even though they've got the lead, their quarterback got really knocked around. Yeah, it's been a disjointed offense so far. No running game. The quarterback's been taking hits with these blitz packages that Maryland's been bringing in this game. And when you watch the quarterback position, not a lot of time, whether it be protection, max protect, or hot reads, they don't have any of those things clicking. Right now, coming out of halftime, they got to find ways to protect the quarterback, get the ball out of his hand quickly with quick routes, and also be able to take on some of this rush and turnovers for Maryland have been abysmal the entire season. They lead the country, and these are the reasons why fumbles, interceptions, and for a team that was playing this team tough against Michigan State the entire game, gives the ball up multiple times and really has given Michigan State the opportunity to take a 10-point lead, lead without doing much on offense. The uh, five turnovers in that first half, much more costly for Maryland. All 17 of the points for Michigan State up on the board as a result, including the pick six from Riley Buller. What you can sense the frustration on the face of Mark D'Antonio. He talked with Paul Carcaterra uh, during halftime, very disappointed in the play of that offensive unit and their inability to protect their quarterback in that first half. Their defensive unit will be out there first as Kevin Cronin kicks it away and no return here for Will Likely. Well, Perry Hills was also knocked around in the first half, came out for a few plays. We've seen both Hills and Caleb Rowe at quarterback. They have both thrown an interception today, and it will be back to Hills, the junior out of Pittsburgh. I think for Maryland, let's stop throwing the ball down the field. Spread this defense out create minimal pass rush lanes so that the quarterback can beat you with his legs or you can get some yards on first and second down in the run game and then get the ball out of your hands on bubble screens to the receivers and let them beat the defenders and get positive yards. Those 42 yards rushing matched Michigan State's rushing total in the first half. And it is the quarterback. He picks up a couple. What did Mike Loxley have to say, Paul? Well, he's happy with his defense for sure. He says, we're going to continue to bring the house defensively. We think we can get to Connor Cook. These guys are playing their tails off. A lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside will continue. But offensively, he said, the way that our quarterbacks are turning the ball over, we're going to have to run almost every single down. Well, that'll be interesting. Well, what will that mean for Will Likely? They've used him as a slot guy when he's played on the offensive side. Brandon Ross right now is the offset back. He'll get the call. And Ross may have gotten out to the 28-yard line. That's it. John Reschke, the linebacker, leading the way. It's third down and six. That's one of the reasons why the run looks a little bit better right now. He's only hit on one of his last 11 pass attempts. They will run option with Hills, and he's going to lose a couple. And it's fourth down. Calhoun and McDowell were right there in the middle. Well, if you're going to run every play, you're going to limit yourself as an offense. I think you got to mix it up a little bit. You know, when, when you think that you have a, an opportunity to use a quarterback, spread them out. When you have a tailback and a tight end lined up in the backfield, that's, to me, telling me run every single time. If you're going to mix it up with the run, spread this team out and get the guys out of the box uh, to me, this, this offense has got to find a path or Michigan State's going to take advantage of it. Lee Schrader. Another wobbly kick. They've had three punts today of under 30 yards. That may get just beyond that mark. 33 yards on that punt from Schrader. And so now with Michigan State's offense coming out, we saw some frustration as well on the sideline from starting quarterback Connor Cook. And it appears like it will be Tyler O'Connor who will come on to start this second half. And this was Connor Cook coming out of the locker room. Very disappointed by something that he heard from the coaching staff about whether he could start or play in this second half. Oh, 
See if they can establish their running game. It's been quiet so far. Gerald Holmes on the carry there. Paul? Competitive juice is flowing without question for Connor Cook. He's injured. He hurt that right shoulder. He tried to go for most of that first half, playing through a lot of pain. You saw he was actually throwing a decent ball. When he found out that he wasn't a go, and I don't think it's a performance type of situation or decision, he was frustrated. But Mark D'Antonio told me at halftime, the offensive line and the running backs are not in sync in terms of picking up protection and, and really protecting the quarterback overall. Thank you, Paul. Connor Cook was hurt in the first half, and he struggled through the pain to try and make it a go as they run it here on second and seven, about a yard shy of the first down. The significance, of course, Connor Cook is one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He's the winningest quarterback in school history. And they wanted to try, Anthony, to get some things right offensively, not only to get the win, but to get ready for Ohio State next week. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they, right now they have a 10-point lead. Again, they're not in a dangerous situation. Maryland's offense has struggled. The coaching staff kind of look at all those things when they make this decision. Yeah, he could probably come in and play, but play it safe right now. If he can't protect the quarterback, then you, you know, try your second back up, and right now... It might be a good plan, yeah. being the, the fact that Maryland's not doing much on offense. Tyler O'Connor with the first down. He did lead them on a touchdown drive in the first quarter. And you can see all the grass stains and the dirt on the back of the jersey for Connor Cook. Cook, as you referenced, never a good sign for a quarterback. He went down early and often under pressure from Maryland. On first and ten. Holmes continues to churn those legs. Gets down inside the 40-yard line. Denzel Conyers with the tackle. Yeah, he's a strong runner. Yards after contact really been the story for him in this football game. Just being able to get through the offensive line's blocks and make yards after contact. State will pick up the pace. Holmes again following the middle of that line. Brian Allen. Getting some time up front. Jalen Brooks with the stop. As long as you control first and second down and don't get in those passing situations that Maryland knows you're going to pass, it can counter those blitz packages that they're bringing and protect your quarterback. So I think the running game, obviously, Coach D'Antonio probably came in at halftime and said, listen, we better start running the ball in this second half and get our quarterback out of harm's way. Let's see if it's their senior center, Jack Allen, who will lead that charge. He's playing alongside his brother Brian now at left guard. The cut back by Holmes slices his way down to the 30. Brooks again on the tackle and a three-yard gain. Okay, and get that clock running. You got your backup quarterback in. There's obviously no rush for Michigan State to get the play in and really pursue and speed this up. I think they're trying to get through this game with the W. But again, you know, Maryland, with the quarterback that won the ball, can hurt you. This entire drive now, seven plays, seven rushes. Holmes breaking tackles down to the 22. He's the six foot two, 15 pounder out of Flint, Michigan. He only had 16 carries through the first three games, Anthony. He was the third stringer behind Scott in London. And due to some injuries, he has worked his way up the roster and into the starting role where he's been for the last three games. And he's coming off his career high performance last week with over 100 yards. He's got 62 here today. Every play's been a rush so far to start this third quarter. They're just piling up the tight ends, too, on both sides of the line. Holmes again. Hard for the Turks to contain this guy. He's inside the 15 and a pickup of eight. And again, countering the blitz packages. You're not going to blitz on first down because you can get shredded on big runs. And right now, playing their base defense, getting the big yardage on first down, it limits Maryland's quote-unquote aggressive attack that Coach Loxley wants to do and unleash on with this defense. Well, they wanted to establish the run today. Didn't do it in the first half. Now in this first drive, eight plays, eight rushes. Holmes is the deep back. He'll get it again. And he'll get 
slammed down to the ground around the 15-yard line. A.J. Hende and you can do were right there, and it's third down. Well, you, you would think you're set up for play action here, but, uh, you know, third in a short situation. Uh, to me, you've got multiple tight ends that you play. You see Josiah Price coming in right now, but they're taking a tight end out. So a quick pass, you know, that's been the big thing. A quick passing game has not been established in this situation. And with two yards, get a good opportunity to get that here if they try. Kings to the left. Burbridge goes right with Shelton. O'Connor going to keep it. He's got the first down on the fake to the tailback. He keeps it and gets inside the five, first and goal. Well, old school quarterback option here. They're just going to read the outside defender. Ngankwe on the outside, and they basically get him on his heels, and he's able to run the ball up the middle. Quick snap. Holmes, touchdown. No air necessary. They literally run their way down the field. And a three-yard touchdown for Gerald Holmes. Opposing your will in the defense. You got big, strong offensive linemen. You got three tight ends rolling in that can block. Gerald Holmes, you see the after contact, all the yards on that drive. He was a one-man show. And they feed him the ball to give him the score. 11 plays, they chewed up turf on every one of them. 62 yards, and Geiger's extra point is good as they take six minutes off the clock. The right side of the offensive line, Clark and Keeler making the holes for Gerald. Lamar undefeated Baylor taking on one loss, Oklahoma. That's at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Well, that'll be the best defense he's faced. I know it's not saying much for the Big 12, but Oklahoma has multiple players that can give the true freshman some issues today in a, in a big game for Baylor. Will Likely gets it out to the 25-yard line and a 27-yard return. And as that defense heads out there, Riley Bulla having himself quite an afternoon. Well, if you're watching the technique book of a linebacker, watch this. Keep your shoulders square, slide across. It's like the old bag drill, and then go make a tackle in the backs. Again here, cross dog blitz, setting up the other linebacker to get him free, but making a tackle, getting off a block, and then reading quarterback's eyes. He sees strength to the right side, tries to stay out of his vision, and all of a sudden he shoots and strikes and makes the INT. Two games in a row he's had him. He's played a tremendous game so far. 44 yards on that pick six for Riley Bulla. Perry Hills on play action, and Bulla's buddy, Darian Harris, was right there to take down Will Likely. So uh, a touchdown here for Michigan State. They go up 24 to seven, starting to feel a little bit better about themselves. And, and as Mark D'Antonio said, would they have liked things to go a little bit better in the first half? Sure, but they've still got big games. They've still got their own destiny out in front of them with Ohio State, Penn State, and possibly Iowa. You're right, and right now when you're behind the sticks on third and long, Penn State doing exactly what they want as far as their defensive plan. Second and 15, Hills will keep. Got the Clemson Tigers in that top spot right now for the playoff, followed by Alabama. Uh, and then uh, the next two in line, Ohio State and Notre Dame. Are those your four, by the way? Well, I'll tell you, my four is I, I love Clemson right now. Offense, defense, number two. I think Ohio State should be number two. Three, I said Oklahoma State earlier. I think they had the biggest win in the Big 12. And number four, I'm going to go with Alabama. Big win against LSU. One loss. I think they deserve to be in the conversation. On third and ten, West Brown, and he's got it. 12 yards on the run for Brown and a first down. That's shocking right there again. You know, they're not showing you anything in the pass game. And you got linemen sliding across. Really good job by Maryland's offensive line. They tried a lineman stunt, defensive line stunt, and it didn't work for Michigan State. They're trying to run up the middle, and a nice bounce outside by Brown. Looked like he was going to be stuck for a loss. And instead, he's out close to midfield and a first down as he got away from Reschke. 
Again, missed tackles. If you're in position to make a play, and Reschke's one of those guys that's been firm. Harris gets caught up inside with the block. If you miss a tackle, you get two big plays now for Maryland when you had him back on third and long. Back-to-back double-digit runs. to Brown. Not much room to the short side of the field. Rushkey that time was able to wrap him up and force him out. Rushkey does a nice job of coming back and making a big tackle. The receiver trying to block him on the edge. It's really no match for the backer. And again, the most stable group of this team has been their linebackers. Pass out into the flat to Tavon Jacobs along with his brother Levern, the receiving tandem, and he's down to the 40. And another double-digit pickup, 12 yards there. Well, right now, poor tackling on this drive has been a bit contagious. Again, Reschke had an opportunity to make another tackle, some DB, some linemen in the spot. to create a one-yard gain but into a 12-yard. Back to Brown, and he runs into Riley Bulla. Junior out of Traverse City, Michigan. They've lost some big names on this defense, certainly the defensive backs to the NFL and Denard and Drummond and Waynes. They lost their starting linebacker, Ed Davis, to an ACL injury preseason. They lost a couple of cornerbacks. And on second and eight, Harris has the tackle. He's one of the seniors that has moved into the starting lineup, having a really good year for them. And now it is third down. They need to get to the 30. I keep them spread out here again. You get those bubble screens on the outside with the receivers. Don't keep it back in the backfield. Let him become a receiver so you have that extra running back skilled quarterback that can maybe take off with his legs and limit blitz chances for this Michigan State defense. Defensively. Pressure coming from Calhoun. Hills will throw it the other way. Back behind the defense. And it's incomplete. Ty Johnson couldn't hold on. It was jarred loose. And Johnson is injured on the play. The true freshman Tyson Smith was over there to knock it free. It's a good job and his awareness for a true freshman to stay home on the back side with some trickery here by Maryland on that play. That low tackle on the lower tier. We'll take a timeout here as they tend to tie Johnson 24 seven Michigan State here in the third. The injury as Tyson Smith ran into Ty Johnson. The pass falls incomplete. And it's fourth down now coming up as Johnson gets some attention on the sideline. Fourth and four. Hills rolling out, running out of room, stays on his feet. Inside the 30 and knocked out of bounds around the 26 yard line and he gets the first down. He is dangerous with his legs. He can break tackles and Shalik Calhoun does a nice job of trying to get to the quarterback here. They try to cut him down. Two guys there just misses the tackle and misjudges the speed of Perry Hills. Being able to bounce it out, big fourth down conversion. They had been one of the worst teams in the country on fourth down prior to that get. And now the 11th play of this drive, and Hills met in the backfield and thrown for a loss down to Paul. Good news for Maryland. Ty Johnson's up, walking around, and now he's actually on the bike. So that is good news for what looked to be potentially a gruesome injury to that lower left leg. But starting running back, West Brown is out right now, too, being evaluated by trainers. So with their run game being so pivotal, huge to get him back out there. That's two of their three guys that we've seen 
in the backfield along with Brandon Ross today. And it is Ross that is in the game right now. Pass incomplete. Looked like they were trying to set up a screen with the heat coming right up the middle. Andrew Zeller, though, the right guard, was the closest guy to it. Yeah, they were going to try to catch him on a tight end screen to true freshman Avery Edwards, number 82, and they had him. The pressure was just too fast. Right now, third and long has not been kind to this Maryland offense. See, one for seven with an INT. And uh, now the uh, uh, officials talking, and it's going to be an intentional grounding penalty called against Welcome Maryland. Down. I know the tight end was in position. The question is, was it nowhere close to him? Because that's the tight end here. He's going to block and release on a screen on the inside. Again, that's coming from referees that don't, probably don't recognize tight end. After further passes. discussion, there was an eligible receiver in the area, number 82. It's an incomplete pass. There you go. There well, you go. Oh, well, they got the rules, Why but sometimes they, they don't know the plays. Why would they not recognize a tight end screen? Is <laughs> that, I mean, well, they got something on me, rules. Okay, <laughs> but outside of that, I, I can tell you they probably missed that. Don't one. mess with a tight end in the area. <laughs> Third down and 14. Pressure from Cox that won the other way, and the ball popped loose down on the grass. Michigan State says they've got it, and they do. Demetrius Cooper with the recovery. It is the fourth turnover of the day for Maryland. Yeah, he gets poked out by Cooper, and he also recovers it. The question is, was his knee down? And two, what was his play call on third and 12? Running the football. The ruling on the field was a fumble yeah, that's recovered by the fumble. defense. Yeah, that was poked out. It was a nice play by Cooper. Watch your poke. He just whips around and pops the ball out right there. Just enough. You see no knees on the ground. So this will stand. Third and 12, running the football. I get running on every play, but, you know, maybe you take a shot Timeout. on the outside there to one of your wide receivers. Interesting play called by Maryland. Fourth turnover, State has scored on the previous three. Maryland trying to convert on a fourth turnover over of the day by the Terps is LJ Scott. He has it pop loose and a green jersey able to dive back on it. Aaron Burbridge was there to recover it. It ends up being an 11 yard gain. Been a sloppy football game for the backs today. Again, LJ Scott, a lot of Yards after contact, you see Anthony Nixon right there stripping it out. And when you're driving the, the run there against defenders trying to tackle you, you better hold on to that football. Maryland's done a nice job of stripping it out, really both teams. He already had a fumble in that first half, so Scott will come to the sideline. It's Delton Williams now in at tailback. Williams may have gotten one or two. Well, it's the Week 10 matchup for Monday Night Football, 8:15 Eastern on ESPN. We've got Andy Dalton and the undefeated Bengals at 8-0, taking on J.J. Watt and the Texans. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 o'clock on ESPN, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. You've got a ton of former Spartans in that matchup as well on Monday night, from Brian Hoyer and Keith Mumphrey to Curtis Drummond and Max Bullock. Darquez Denard on the Bengals roster. Maryland kicker Nick Novak as well. And the pass high and over the head. That's the first pass attempt of this second half intended for DeAnthony Arnett after, uh, what, 12 straight runs. And, and Tyler O'Connor, uh, when he came in his first series in the first quarter, did a nice job of leading the team down the field. Obviously, Connor Cook banged up in this football game, took a shot on his shoulder, multiple hits with his blitz packages of the Maryland uh, Terps coming at him today. They decide to come out of the half and start Tyler O'Connor today in the second, second half of this game. On third down and seven. They'll roll out O'Connor. 
The throw downfield, and up goes Burbridge to try and make the catch incomplete. He landed hard. Sean Davis was able to jar it loose. And it's fourth down. And Maryland brings six. They get the quarterback outside the pocket, and it's a tough catch. There's no question by Burbridge, but to me, this is why you're being considered as one of the top receivers in the Big Ten. Ball goes up, leaps up, has got it in his hands, gets punched out. I'll tell you, these DBs for Maryland, very nice, not just getting to the football, but making plays on the football. Yep, exactly. Davis there, Nixon has done it, Hendy, and of course, likely, aggressive corner, 5-7, doing a nice job. High punt, and likely will let that one drop over his head and it will end up in the end zone for the touchback. 24 to seven, Michigan State with the lead over Maryland. Final uh, seconds here of this third quarter. Things are starting to look a little bit better for them as uh, they head into the fourth quarter. They've got big opportunities coming up uh, and it will all start with Ohio State next week. You're right, and the health of Connor Cook obviously in question, not coming in right now in the second half of this game, so what will his health be? And they're gonna need everybody on all cylinders next week. And this game's been slow for them offensively. Mm -hmm. I think they just got disconjointed, and Ohio State's watching this tape right now, and they're gonna bring some of these blitz packages and pressure to, to Connor Cook if he's in this game. And you look at the schedule moving forward, there is a lot of opportunity, and add on to that, the potential of playing in the Big Ten Conference Championship game, and if Ohio goes and continues to win, and they're undefeated, Iowa, yes, yep. two top five teams, potentially, they could knock off along with Penn State. But they got to play much better than they are yeah. today. I just didn't see the intensity in this football game early on, didn't see the things that you would normally That's see with a big bounce-back loss. Through three quarters, uh, it's been a rough day for quarterbacks in this one. We've seen two on each side. Connor Cook knocked out of the ball game in the first half. So was Perry Hills momentarily. 24 to seven, Sparty. Oh look. And welcome back to Michigan State. Nice fall day here in East Lansing. The 8-1 and one Spartans leading the Maryland Terrapins, trying to deny the Terps their first Big Ten win of the season. 17 of their 24 points have come off turnovers. The Terps have coughed it up four times. A couple of fumbles, a couple of interceptions. The ball's down on the deck again. Rough day all around, Beth, right now. Just beautiful day the, the ball's definitely not slippery it's it's just been a, a mishandled uh, day and he just took his eyes off this one you know we always trust yourself as a quarterback that ball's coming back you feel it in your hands you grab it just shut his fingers too early on that one got to see the ball hit your hands and process information afterwards and not doing that that can happen Paul Carcaterra reported uh, a little bit earlier. Wes Brown was getting some treatment on the sideline. He is back in now, offset alongside Hills. Hills will keep, and he'll get to the 25. Chris Carter's got an update on the Ohio State University. Yeah, but the Ohio State University over on ABC is starting to pull away a little bit here. Here is Ezekiel Elliott takes it in. His 20th 100-yard rushing game of his career tying Eddie George second all time in school history 21 three Buckeyes. So it looks like Ohio State will stay undefeated uh, number three in the latest playoff ranking of course that's one of the big games next Saturday when the Buckeyes will be hosting Michigan State. There's a better punt from Maryland and the fair catch by McGarrett Kings. 47 yards on that punt from Lee Schrader. Well, how about next Saturday? This one's on the slate. The Buckeyes won here last year. Can Sparty return the favor in Columbus next week? Arby's and A1 have always been close to each other in the phone book. Yards of total offense for the Buckeyes. They beat Michigan State here 49 to 37. And ultimately went on to win the Big Ten and the National Championship. Home. 
Evans on the first down carry. And he's bottled up. Jermaine Carter with the stop. And now for the latest dish brought to you by Dish. Here are your conference favorites and their chances of winning. Baylor at 38% in the Big 12, Ohio State at 49% in the Big 10. Well, it looks like even with undefeated Iowa on the other side, Ohio State and Michigan State team, and Michigan still in the mix, they feel that they're the favorite. The third quarterback of the day, this is Damian Terry. Knocked out of bounds out near midfield. Anthony Nixon was able to bump him out, and it's a first down Michigan State. Well, he had the blitzing corner faked out on that read option, and that's what he'll bring to the table. Much different than what these fans are used to seeing at quarterback position. He is a dual threat quarterback. Damian Terry is, and, you know, he's played some snaps last week, got in, threw the ball, did some QB runs, and now they're going back. So they're, play they're playing two quarterbacks here, same series, multiple snaps, mixing it up. Connor Cook was hurt in the first half, played through the pain, but has not played here in the second half. It's predominantly been Tyler O'Connor, and a lot of this guy running the football, Gerald Holmes, gets the pick up. Connor Cook uh, over there with the sophomore out of Erie, Pennsylvania, Damian Terry. He's probably saying, hey, can you teach me that move, how you, <laughs> how you pull it out and run to the outside with that speed? I, I like to learn how to do that. It looks like uh, both of them are going to be in there now. We've had 10 different guys carry the football today for Michigan State. And are Terry and O'Connor in together? Yes, they are. O'Connor, the quarterback, is lined up as a wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. I'd say play left. Go left. Terry will keep. And it's much ado about not much in particular. Roman Braglio was right there to stuff it. You're not going to trick a defense. You're not going to go throw it to the quarterback that's uh, extended on the outside. They try to do a weak, weak read option to the weak side of the defense, and, and they're home to, to, to make that tackle on the back end. And Again, you know, multiple quarterbacks coming in. Connor Cook, obviously injured in this game, was able to come back, but they decided to make a move not to start him in the second half of this football game, Beth, and they've been in control pretty much throughout. On third and ten. Fires a pass to Burbridge, and it's caught for the first down out across midfield. 14 yards on that strike. Guarded closely by Sean Davis, the corner. Transferred strong safety. They're going to press each other. And right there, just making a contested catch. Those are the things Burbridge does good. I know he dropped the ball earlier, and you see Sean Davis. They won every single one of these balls, contested balls, in their favor. And right there, Michigan State at, able to come out on the back end there. Play action. O'Connor with time. Going deep downfield, and it's intercepted at the two-yard line by Anthony Nixon. He laterals it to Sean Davis. Davis looking for some blockers out across the 35. And he's brought down by the wide receiver, Aaron Burbridge. Five turnovers in their first nine games, and now three of them today. Try to go play action on that play, and nobody home. Maryland sitting back in coverage. Anthony Nixon just sits on it, trying to make some plays. Lateral and away. This might have been their best offensive play of the day for Maryland as they can change. Half. And it's D.J. Moore throwing it downfield, incomplete, looking for Lever and Jacobs. They had him, too. They really did. Moore, true freshman wide receiver, did the throwback. Again, if he just let the ball release a little earlier, but there was a flag on the play. Coming from all the way across the field. DJ Moore, the freshman out of Philly, firing that one downfield. He's been on the receiving end of 
three touchdowns of over 40 yards. There's no foul on the play for an ineligible receiver downfield. Incomplete pass, second down. The kid's got a cannon. What, about 65 yards in the air there? <laughs> he might be in the equation. they got three quarterbacks right now that have struggled to pass it. Why not add one more guy? If likely he can switch positions, maybe more might be in the plans too. Hills is 9 for 23, 87 yards through the air so far today. On the ground, Wes Brown, and he's quickly taken down by McDowell to the studio. Chris? All right, y'all. Florida State was trailing by 10 points earlier to NC State, but Sean McGuire replaced an ineffective Ever Golson, and here he finds Kermit Whitfield wide open. So it's 27-17 from down 10 to up 10. Knowles right now over on in Tallahassee, guys. Thank you, Chris. Clock running, uh, 9.15 to go in this one. Third and 13. Under pressure, and Chris Fry will get the sack, and it's fourth down. And again, uh, right there, you see that the, with the pressure coming and the quarterback not being able to have time. Honestly, I'm kind of disappointed we didn't see more of Perry Hills and his legs. And with the defense caught off, I think they're going to give him the timeout. Michigan State timeout. called the timeout. Michigan is State, first of the half. It'll be a full charge timeout was quickly trying to snap it there on fourth down and we'll take a timeout as well. I know you're getting ready for uh, a different kind of New Year's Eve with the national semifinals on New Year's Eve this year. The college football playoff rankings Clemson Alabama Ohio State Notre Dame the top four this week as Maryland will go for it here on fourth and 14 down 24 to 7. Hills passes away. It's caught at the 40 and out to the 44, but that will be short. So they'll turn it over on downs to the Michigan State offense. Well, the Michigan State Spartans uh, trying to fight their way back into the playoff picture. Beth Mullins, Anthony Beck, your thoughts on the way things look right now with those top four teams? Well, I'll tell you, when I look at it, I thought Oklahoma State would make a bigger jump than they did. I thought they had a signature win against TCU. I was uh, a little shocked on Iowa's jump from nine to five. I like Iowa at five, mm -hmm. but how do they jump after all, an Indiana four win? spots after beating <laughs> Indiana and Baylor beats Kansas State? And, does, and stays in the same position. I love Alabama at four. I don't know yeah. if I'd push them up. For some reason, for me, that old Miss loss weighs heavy on my mind. That's the, that's the big question as far as I look at them. A big win against LSU. There's no question about it. And they could be playing the best football. But it's not basketball, right? It's not how you finish your last couple of games. It's the whole season. It's an extension of every game. Don't tell me you don't have to get up for a law in a team early in the season if you lost it and have a hiccup that you can continue down. I think you got to weigh more on being an undefeated football team. And I think there's some good ones out there and they continue to prove. There's six of them, as a matter of fact, that are still out there. We'll, we'll lose a couple of them because only one can come out of the Big Ten. Only one can come uh, out of... Uh, 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 the American as well, and, and certainly things are starting to take a little more shape. But I, I think it's also got to be based on what you've done to this point. I'm not sure any of the Big 12 teams should be in the discussion until this week when we start to see them playing against one another. And Oklahoma State certainly yeah. started to make that move with their win over TCU last year. Backloaded schedule. Last week. Exactly. Backloaded schedule. Oklahoma State was the first tested team. They beat TCU. Let's be honest. You know, we know the defense struggles, but Boykin was a Heisman candidate going into that football game. We had not seen him play that poorly. Four interceptions against the, the Heisman candidate Boykin, which is impressive from a defensive standpoint. You're right. As this season uh, unravels, we'll see some other Big 12 teams. Oklahoma, a lot of teams want to push them up, but they lost yeah. to Texas this year. I know they're playing good now, but again, it weighs heavy for me overall what you're doing in your complete schedule. Damian Terry heaves it downfield incomplete. Paul, your thoughts? It's challenge flag for Anthony back. To, uh, look, oh, the red flag's out. Yeah, yeah I, I get it. A, a loss means something. Last last year, Ohio State loses to Virginia Tech early in the season. Completely different team. Wins a national title. Right. 
Alabama loses to Ole Miss. Five turnovers in the game. Who's more impressive than them right now? They shut down Leonard Fournette, under 40 yards rushing. The guy was averaging 180 yards per game. Dominant performance by the Tide. And they play in the SEC, and they're <laughs> swinging every single week. And Point, throw, I'm going to throw another flag on that one and say, listen, that was a, a freshman quarterback coming in, a young guy that is getting his first start, trying to get his feet wet. Their offensive lineman had been hurt. That's why they put that in the conversation. We've got six minutes and 55 seconds of this still to come, folks. Stay with us. This we'll time. check on Will Likely player. as well when we come back. Our chefs raided the bar. Coming up today on ESPN, we've got two big games with playoff implications for you at 3.30. It's Oklahoma State undefeated against Iowa State. And then one loss, LSU taking on Arkansas. Both games also streaming live on Watch ESPN. 6.55 to play. Michigan State with the 24-7 lead. Maryland with the football and the pass complete out to the 25-yard line to Amba Etatawa. Eight yards on that uh, pickup. First catch there for Etatawa. The run here, Wes Brown. And he's got the first down out across the 35. How, to per how about a Purdue Northwestern checkup, Chris? Yeah, Purdue's been giving the number 18 team in the country a hard time in Evanston, but here Justin Jackson takes it in from two yards out, so this gives Northwestern the lead. About four minutes left to go. Three minutes left to go in this one. Still Northwestern upset. Yep. Thank you very much, Chris. And the sack for Craig Evans. That's the fourth of the game for Michigan State as he takes down Hills. That's a big man, 6'2", 325 pounds. And I might be kind on that way, but he see the quickness. And he's getting some more play today because of the injuries. And again, he's just fighting on a double team. Perry Hills has had issues, obviously, passing the ball today, keeping his eyes downfield. Michigan State's bought pressure, but right there, nice coverage on the back end by a much maligned defensive secondary for Mich Michigan State. On second and 19, Hills out across the 40. Etatawa again with the catch. This is probably his best throw with anticipation. The wide receiver still coming out of his route when the ball is in the air. Those are the things he has to get better at. There's no question he struggles in the passing game. But to me, I'm a little surprised the lack of usage with his legs. I thought he could be a weapon today if he got those opportunities. Third and five. Rifles one out to midfield, and it's caught again. at Etatawa first down inside the 45. Paul's got a Will Likely it update. It looks like Will Likely will be okay as we see Hill's down right now, but he's getting to his knees as well but will likely the most dynamic player on the maryland team we saw him nicked up to the sideline he's tough as nails i actually had a chance to speak to will likely this week i asked him where he got his toughness from he said growing up in florida he played against uncles older family members in the backyard tackle football with no pads this kid is tough as nails <laughs> bell glades also they, they put out some players now yep. across the country Strong recruiting ground uh, for years. Uh, the Florida schools did quite well down there. Hills hit as he releases, and it's caught. And Atawa again has been busy. And Shalik Calhoun put another hit on Hills, trying to fight his way through it. Yeah, he's taking some shots right now. Last play, he took a square arm right in the kisser by uh, Bula on that pat on that blitz package. Shalit Calhoun getting revved up here. Knows they're passing downs here, so they're taking advantage of the pass rush. Well, from a team that tried to run early in the half, now forced to throw. And this one deep downfield incomplete. Arjun Colhoun had a beat on it, looking for Etatawa again. You know, second and two, he takes some shots. But again, quick passing game. If they're going to bring pressure, you see Michigan State bring it. Same thing with Michigan State on the same token when Maryland's bringing pressure. Where is the quick passing game today to kind of get the ball out of the quarterback's hands and help them out when those times are needed? Final four minutes, third and two. Blitz coming, Hills 
And it is bobbled and drops incomplete. DJ Moore tried to haul it in, and it's fourth down. Kind of the old school bet when there was actually hot routes built in when there's pressure. And you see here the opportunity for DJ Moore to make a catch. Bob on the ball almost pulls it in with his legs, but hits you in the hands. You got to make those catches. True freshman. Timeout. Merlin, first of the half. We have 30 second charge. Timeout. We'll call a timeout here on fourth down and two. Well, tonight after Washington State and number 19 UCLA, keep it locked into. But uh, when you talk about the best teams in the Pac 12, I think Stanford right now, and people are sleeping a little bit on Utah. They, they continue to win. That matchup will be much to look forward to if they play in the Pac 12 championship. Yeah, Utah is a team right now that's number 10 in the rankings and still has a chance. On fourth and two, Hills calls his own number and he's down at the 35 yard line and that will be well short. And Michigan State will turn it over on downs and get the ball back. There's a look at the next games up, including undefeated Oklahoma State and Iowa State, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. And I'm sure most college football fans remember that matchup in November of 2011. Undefeated Oklahoma State getting closer to a spot in the BCS championship game. And then they went to Ames. And the Cyclones scored late in regulation, and then in the second overtime, Brandon Whedon intercepted. And it was Jeff Woody, a four-yard touchdown run to win it in double overtime and end the Cowboys' chances at the national championship. Gerald Holmes gets the carry out across the 40-yard line. What do you think? You think they've seen that in uh, in in Ames and uh, also in Stillwater this week? Uh, listen, I, there's no question that that's a game that is rehashed. I don't think there's many players that are on the roster or on the team that were part of that game. But I think the biggest thing for these Big 12 uh, football teams is that you know, they got to take every single game and win, you know when when they're not playing the top tier talent. They got to really make a statement. If you're playing Iowa State, you can't let them have a chance in that football game. And if Oklahoma wants the chance to, to get into the next level in the conversation, they need to take care of business today. Gerald Holmes is the deep back in the eye. They'll call his name. He's wrapped up in the backfield by Anna Bonham. Holmes today, 18 carries, 83 timeout. yards. Merlin, second of the half. Your 30 second charge timeout. And as they move forward now uh, and get ready for the showdown in Columbus for Michigan State, you certainly got to hope that Connor Cook is going to be able to get. Don't don't forget, you know, Ohio State's watching that tape, and they're seeing some areas where they can take advantage of, and they got a pretty good defensive end on their fo uh, football front too. And Joey oh, Bosa, Joey. he's going to be a lot to handle. Him versus Conklin next week could be a primetime matchup. And it certainly appears as though the Buckeyes will stay undefeated. They're beating Illinois 28 to 3. The return of JT Barrett at quarterback today. Terry stays on his feet, picks up a few more. Going to be a couple yards yard shy of the marker. Let's go back to that Cook injury slammed down to the turf by Anna Bonham. Timeout. Harwood. And he was That's not the same charge. after that. He Time came back on, he played he out the rest right of the first half and a 17-7 lead. And then some of the pain that we were able to witness on the sideline, but the coaches shut it down in the second half. I don't think the problem is going to be him being ready to go. It's taking more hits on it next yeah. week. Don't think for a second Ohio State's not going to bring some pressure and try to get in his face. And even if they're not sacking him, the hits are the big issue. And that was the difference early in this game that ultimately led to him uh, heading to the sidelines. But again, your shoulder and a quarterback, your throwing arm, crucial. Uh, we'll see what his recovery looks like as this week goes on. He's the winningest quarterback in school history, has had tremendous success here along with Mark D'Antonio. And we talked to the coach yesterday, said, hey, you know, we, we, we love Big Ten championships. We love trips to the Rose Bowl. The expectations are different now, and the playoff is definitely something that they are thinking of year in and year out. And a chance to get back in that chase perhaps next week against the Buckeyes. 
Hartbarger's oh. punt goes out of bounds. 2.40 to go. We talked about that Oklahoma State game coming up this afternoon. How about the one prime time tonight at 8 o'clock on ABC? Number 12, Oklahoma. Number 6, Baylor. It's Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart. Of course, that'll be the youngster, Jared Stidham. And uh, OU with a terrific quarterback as well in Barrett, uh, Baker Mayfield. Yeah, and I think it's going to come down to, will a Big 12 team play some defense yeah. and affect the quarterbacks in these systems? I think they sit back too much and allow things to happen. you got to get in this young quarterback's face, make him make quick decisions, and confuse him. Right now, if you don't do that, he's going to pick you apart. I, I think it's going to be tough for Oklahoma. Great catch right there. Going to Oklahoma, or Oklahoma going to Baylor and trying yeah. to pull the win off, even with... The young quarterback, the true freshman, because I just feel like that system right now is just too hard to stop with the weapons that Baylor has, running and passing the ball. And this starts the stretch for the Baylor Bears, Oklahoma, TCU, and Oklahoma State in the next three weeks. Caleb Bro is the quarterback. And the catch is made out across midfield and another first down for Maryland. This one to Tavon Jacobs. Caleb Rowe, when you watch him, you're going to see him stand in the pocket and really he'll hit he'll hit some passes now where they let the receivers get into the routes. The problem is as a starter, a former starter, those passing situations when it's clutch, he's really been off as a passer with all the interceptions through one earlier today. All side. Defense, number 89. Five-yard penalty, first down. Boy, the challenge from the coaches to the defensive ends was to win the edge to get some pressure on the quarterback. That is five offsides penalties today. And the majority of them are on a senior. That, the yeah. Most of them are uh, Calhoun jumping off sides, and you're right. You can't give Ohio State free yards because they'll make you pay. Road to Jacobs once again. Nine yards on that pickup, another first down. Wes Brown on the run. Brown with the cutback. Inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. I think this last minute and a half for Michigan State, you want to finish it strong. You don't want to let them score. Official's time. Come Injured out of players. this with some momentum. Uh, playing this game. You see McDowell right now down on the ground after that play. I don't know if you can get through a game this year with Michigan State mm. with nicked up players, guys knocked out for the season. You know what? Give them credit. You know, one loss through going through all of yeah. that has been pretty impressive with the obstacles, especially defensive side of the football. It, it has been tough to find players maintained in the lineup week in and week out. Ed Davis, the linebacker, out with the ACL. R.J. Williamson and Devante Copeland. Viante Copeland in the defensive backfield. That's McDowell slamming to the turf. It's a big man, 6'6", 275 pounds. Good-looking sophomore. I mean, he is the future for this football team. There's no question about it on the defensive line side of the ball. Second and four. Row intercepted. Picked off by Monte Nicholson. Thirty yards on the return for Nicholson. That's the fifth takeaway for the Spartan defense this afternoon. And when you've had situations in the last few games, not being in the right spot, lack of confidence from the DBs, and you can get those kind of plays. That's why I said you got to finish strong as you're a defense. And right here, just reads the eyes of the quarterback comes back inside and makes a big play. And Nicholson's been one of those guys. They start her, then they pull him out, then they rotate it. Remember, folks, six different starting lineups in the secondary for Michigan State. And another interception. Yeah. And, you know, Loxley just, it, it's tough to call plays and get the quarterback to be on the same page and get your offense going when you have so many interceptions. It's really unprecedented, to yeah. be quite honest with you, on how many times, really some bad ones that they've had, but Definitely a confidence builder finishing this game on defense like they did. Row three completions today and two interceptions. 
And it's time out there for Maryland. And the Terps are now looking at a seventh consecutive loss. The turnovers coming in with 30, five more this afternoon. Two from Rowe, one from Hills, and then a couple of fumbles, Ross and Wes Brown. Well, number one, they're, they're going to be in that search to find who their, le their new leader is. That leadership role is going to be important and, and really start to take off and help these teams to finish strong uh, with their season. we have got Indiana and Rutgers, two games that they could potentially yep. win, end on a good yep. note, get some confidence with some of these young players as they transition to new leadership moving forward. Michigan State will improve to 9-1 and one and head off to Columbus next weekend to face Ohio State. And Maryland will finish things up and head back home for Indiana and then a road trip at Rutgers. Once again, the final score, Michigan State 24, Maryland 7. College football continues on ESPN2. But first, we got to check in with Chris Cotter, Butch Davis, and Robert Smith back in the studio. Football Scoreboard is presented by Honda. Coming up next here on ESPN, two you.